what's happening around the world and what's happening here at home. A very good evening to you and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. Let's take a quick look at your headlines for tonight. Chinese Defense Minister to visit Sri Lanka on the 27th of April. Police obstruct protest by unemployed graduates opposite the presidential secretariat. <laughs> Government to amend Colombo Port City Economic Commission Bill. Supreme Court orders Attorney General to present facts at court. Harin Fernando summoned before the Criminal Investigations Department. Chinese Defense Minister Wei Fen He is due to arrive in Sri Lanka on the 27th of April. General Wei Feng He was appointed to head China's Ministry of National Defense at the 13th National People's Congress on the 19th of March 2018. He became a member of the Communist Party of China in January of 1972. General Wei Feng He is also a current member of China's Central Military Committee. The Department of Government Information said that the Chinese Defense Minister will remain in the country until the 29th of April. The United Unemployed Graduates Center staged a protest opposite the Presidential Secretariat today. They demanded solutions to the issues faced by unemployed graduates. A tense situation arose when the police attempted to disperse the protesting unemployed graduates from the location. The protesters' demands include the formation of a national plan to recruit unemployed graduates annually. Subsequently, the protesters moved to the agitation site located opposite the presidential secretariat. Six representatives from the group of protesters were given an opportunity to meet with an official of the presidential secretariat. During our discussions, the official agreed to grant us discussions to all those who face issues such as ours at 2 p.m. on the 30th of this month. Meanwhile, the two-day debate on the report of the Commission to investigate allegations of political victimization during the period from the 8th of January 2015 to the 26th of November 2019 was held in Parliament today. Here are some of the views that were expressed in Parliament today. As a person who appeared for the first politically motivated cases filed against Basil Rajapaksa and since then as I have been involved in over 15 cases of the SLPP and the Rajapaksas, I have a clear right to speak about this. On the 21st of January, they issued the first Gazette, just 12 days after they came into power. They legally established the police FCID that took steps to even arrest and remand wives and children of politicians. While the previous government exacted political revenge in an illegal and shameful manner, they did not include any of these in the Geneva report. They would have been asleep when these things happened. After Basil Rajapaksa was arrested, Namal Rajapaksa was arrested. They remanded him twice. Even today he has cases filed against him. Let's imagine that Namal was prosecuted because he is involved in politics. What did Yoshita do? They remanded Yoshita as well. All of them were asked to confess that Basil Rajapaksa gave them this order or Namal Rajapaksa gave them this order or Gotabe Rajapaksa gave this order. 
and they will be released. But when they refused to do so, they were remanded. I would like to remind you that I was arrested and posters were put up all over the country calling to arrest my family and children on site. They lived in hiding for five years. This country has a history like that. The president of this commission was called a mad person who does not understand the country and the justice system. We see the recommendations in this report as kakile decisions. The law has been used arbitrarily and the court system of this country has been surpassed as well. Also, the president has now appointed a special presidential commission to submit further recommendations on this commission report. We have an issue with what future steps will be taken based on the recommendations of the special presidential commission report. We understand that it will be the intention of the government to implement through parliament any recommendations calling for the suspension of the civic rights of members of the good governance government and those involved in the corruption committee. Since there are members of the judiciary who are sitting members of this special presidential commission, we hope that they will conduct themselves in a way that protects the integrity of the judiciary of this country. We see the suspension of the civic rights of opposition parliamentarians as a cowardice move. We saw certain recommendations in this commission report that recommended the acquittal of certain people who have been indicted in court. They also recommend pardon certain other people who have already been sentenced. Here are some examples. There is a case where a group of schooling children were kidnapped and held for ransom. When information was coming into light that this kidnapping was done by the Navy, all of these children were killed and tied to a stone and drowned in sea. When such a case has been tried in court, this mad commission has recommended that these people be acquitted. Is this justice? No, it is not. These are blatant crimes. Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca pointed out that although the Commission was tasked with inquiring into incidents of political victimization suffered by state sector employees, employees of state corporations, armed forces and the police, the Commission has surpassed their mandate and presented recommendations regarding individuals who do not fall under any of these categories. The Commission has recommended that Nissan Kasena Adipati should be released. He is not a state sector employee. He is a person who deserted the army when he was a captain since he was afraid of the war. Before the year 2010, the Sri Lanka Navy provided ships with the required services in securing and holding weapons to protect themselves against pirates. After 2010, the Ministry of Defense gave Nissan Kasena Adipati permission to do this and deprived the country of a large amount of revenue that was due to be received by the country. By providing these services, the government earned a revenue of 1.5 million US dollars monthly that amounts to 18 million US dollars every year the government and the Navy lost this revenue the Minister of Defense handed over this project to Nissan Kasein Adipati after 2010 Nissan Kasein Adipati used illegal weapons to provide this service through the ships named MV Avantgarde docked in the Red Sea and the ship MV Mahanuara. He had displayed the Sri Lankan flag and provided services to ships using illegal weapons. The weapons on board these vessels were illegal ones. Even the serial numbers of these weapons were erased. This mad commission has now recommended that Nissan Kasein Adipati, who engaged in such illegal activities, be acquitted of all charges. Field Marshal Sarath Fonseca added that the commission has recommended to grant pardons to certain people who have even been sentenced to death by a court. Then this commission has also recommended that Duminda Silva, who is currently serving a death sentence, should be granted a pardon. I have no political or personal issues with Duminda Silva. He is a very nice person and I have spoken with him as well. But we do not approve of his actions. They cited the fact that Ranjan Ramanayake spoke to one of the judges in the case and I even found out that he had spoken to the judge after the verdict was delivered. This commission had become so crazy that they have cited this matter and said that the verdict given to them in the silver was wrong. <laughs> Under the Judicature Act, there is a provision where prisoners are granted pardons after a four-year review. We have not given this four-year review to prisoners for the past 22 years. We have not requested this four-year review for Duminda Silva. There are many prisoners who have been sentenced to death, life in prison or a term of imprisonment over 20 years. We had submitted a cabinet paper to the President through the Minister of Justice. 
requesting for some leniency for these prisoners and to grant them this four-year review. It is clear that through this commission report, the government is conspiring to destroy their political opponents. What Hitler did in one night, this government has now sought to do in one report. The government is targeting leaders of the opposition. If the government is thinking that they can suspend the civic rights of these leaders and destroy them politically, this is where the government has gotten it wrong. They are trying to exercise the powers of the judiciary through parliament. I would like to make a request from the government not to make Sri Lanka a joke in front of the international community. In the end, I would like to remind you of a statement made by U.S. President Abraham Lincoln. Remember that you will be judged for what you said and did during your lifetime. Remember this as well. Meanwhile, parliamentarian Harin Fernando has been notified to appear before the Criminal Investigations Department at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Fernando had received the notice while receiving private medical treatment in Colombo. The parliamentarian has been summoned before the CID to record a statement in connection to the April 21st attacks. Voice of the People What you just witnessed were not visuals from a film, but a situation experienced by villagers daily. Our cameras in Mahayangane captured the manner in which the three elephants had caused massive destruction to the farmers in the area. For several years, News First, the voice of the people, has been warning that it might not be too long before elephants encroach into cities as well. However, as officials continue to focus only on their power struggle, the people of this country have been mired in several problems. Marauding wild elephants are encroaching into villages knowing that the harvest of farmers is stored inside their homes. These elephants are forced to go in search of food by encroaching into villages as they cannot meet their needs in their habitats. Wild elephants destroy the belongings of villagers, shattering their livelihoods, leaving them with no option but to film the damage. In a latest incident, villagers had to spend hours to drive away three elephants that had destroyed banana, coconut and other cultivations. These events have left the farmers completely helpless. The elephant encroached into our area at 10 p.m. Luckily, we were able to chase it away. My house will crumble to the ground even if the elephant touches it. We are living in this house while storing our harvests in it as well. Voice of the people. The human elephant conflict has aggravated in the village of Atharagallava in the Polonnaruwa district. A herd of 28 elephants had encroached into the Atharagallava village from the Murugahakanda reserve yesterday. These elephants had destroyed about one acre of cultivations of these farmers. According to farmers, the failure to install electric fences has failed to resolve the problem. 
A substandard electric fence installed seven years ago is malfunctioning at present. These were the views expressed by the farmers in the area. <laughs> A group of parents staged a protest demanding the construction of a building at the Ralua Primary School in Hambantota. A building of a school in the Wirakete Divisional Secretariat in the Hamathuta district is built up of nothing but dried branches of a coconut tree. Surprisingly, this school is located in an area consisting of an international port, an airport, auditoriums and expressways as well. Although 112 students of the Ralua Primary School had been managing with one building, the situation changed drastically with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. With social distancing measures coming into effect, the students of Grade 5 were only left with a small space built of coconut branches. Parents of the students of Ralua Primary School engaged in a protest today, demanding solutions to several problems faced by their children including the lack of a standard building of the educational institution. Meanwhile, a police officer who arrived at the site said that funds have been approved to construct a building at the school. However, the parents who disregarded the statement made by the police officer engaged in a protest opposite the Wallace Muller Zonal Education Office. According to our correspondent, members of the Inter-University Students' Federation joined the protest as well. This village is the hometown of the President and the Prime Minister. It is also the hometown of several leading ministers in the country. The students in the neighboring village go to a school built using coconut branches. A standard building must be constructed for the students of this school. They should be provided with a library as well. A solution should be provided to the problem of the inadequate number of teachers. A safety wall should be built. This school does not even have a name board. A number of new amendments to the Port City Economic Commission Bill were forwarded to the Attorney General today. This was revealed during the hearing of the petitions filed at the Supreme Court challenging the constitutionality of the Port City Economic Commission's Bill. Appearing for the Attorney General's Department, Additional Solicitor General Farzana Jamil stated in court that the government has decided to introduce a number of new amendments to the Port City Economic Commission Bill. President's counsel Sanjeeva Jayawardhana stated in court that his clients advised him that the composition of the Port City Economic Commission will be amended as to require a majority of the members of the commission to be Sri Lankan citizens. President's counsel Jayawardhana was appearing for the Secretary of the Finance Ministry SR Artigala and Secretary to the Cabinet of Ministers Donald Fernando who were intervenient petitioners. Additional Solicitor General Farzana Jamil pointed out that the President, who is the head of the Triforces and the executive of the country, is empowered by law to claim land on the shore of the island as well as land reclaimed from the sea. The Additional Solicitor General further pointed out that the Colombo Port City Special Economic Zone is a special economic zone and not an area that falls under the portfolio of the provincial councils and local government. The additional Solicitor General pointed out that this special economic zone that was created in furtherance of the policy of the country does not include any provisions detrimental to the nation. The petitions will be taken up for hearing again at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Various views were expressed on the Kalamba Port City Economic Commission Bill today as well. According to the 2019 bill, the initial contributory funds should be received and passed by the government in parliament. But the bill tabled by Mahindra Rajpaksa in 2020 only refers to the project company. The government is not involved in this. That is the problem here. 
If this is not a commission and if this is a statutory authority which has absolute power and receives foreign funding, to whom does this entity belong to? We are not against this, but we oppose the laws that have been drafted over this matter. This new draft bill is even more dangerous. The power of the legislator has been completely removed. The powers of the judiciary has been ousted. The powers of the cabinet have been removed. This is not happening in any other country. We would like to know why something like this is being done. In foreign nations, the central bank or the commission has not been granted powers to establish betting centers. Taking these factors into account, a suspicion has arisen as to whether this would pave the way for money laundering. Why did they bring this bill just before the new year? We discussed about this for two years. Why isn't this being discussed? Why has this evaded the oversight of the foreign ministry? Why have the powers of the finance ministry been reduced? <laughs> With whose lives are they playing? I believe that this must be transparent. They have exempted income tax laws in this area as well. I have the bill with me. What is the difference between the concept another state and this entity? At one point, we dreaded the usage of the word federal and opposed it. Isn't that correct? Seriously, If we take a look at this, this is what it means. Only that word is missing. Voting rights are not applicable within this area. What more do we have to say? Much has been spoken about national security, but an external group is controlling us, close to our country. We know that Sri Lanka was invaded by the European nations. This includes the Portuguese in 1505, by the Dutch in 1658 and the British in 1795. I think that Sri Lanka is at risk of becoming a victim of the modern form of global neocolonism through the Port City project. A majority of the ownership of the land that was reclaimed near the Sri Lankan territory now lies with China. A major portion of the land belongs to China Harbour Engineering Corporation. It is through these companies that European nations gain control over our countries. Unfortunately, if we take a look at the provisions of this bill, we can observe that the Sri Lankan president and his government have forgotten the country's colonial history and are adopting a mechanism under which they are subject in the country to a colonial rule. May port city at Adal may panate ketumpate tibene waganti di habeluam. The Chinese ship carrying Ukrainian Begapan uranium hexafluoride that was docked at the Hambantota Harbour left Sri Lankan territorial waters this afternoon. Director General of the Sri Lanka Atomic Energy Regulatory Council Anil Ranjit said that further investigations are being carried out to determine whether the ship's entry to the country was intentional. The ship named MVBBC Nepals, which was sailing from Rotterdam in the Netherlands to the port of Shanghai in China, docked at the port of Hambantota at around 9 p.m. on the 20th of this month. The ship made an emergency call at the port to fix a technical fault in the engine of the ship. However, a subsequent investigation revealed that the ship was carrying uranium hexafluoride, a radioactive material. Following the discovery, the Atomic Energy Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka had ordered the ship to leave the port immediately. However, the ship was anchored outside the Hambantota port until this afternoon. The Director General of the Atomic Energy Regulatory Council of Sri Lanka, Anil Ranjit, said that the BBC Nepal's left Sri Lankan waters at around 1.30 p.m. today after repairing the technical fault on the ship. How will the law be enforced against bringing such hazardous radioactive material into a port in Sri Lanka? We requested the ship to leave Sri Lanka as prior approval was not obtained. Accordingly, the ship left the port. We have to file legal action against the Sri Lankan representative. 
If a radioactive substance is brought into Sri Lanka, there are provisions in the Act on how one should proceed. In particular, we need to inquire from the harbour master whether this incident was orchestrated intentionally or not. Based on these findings, we will take the necessary legal action. By oversight, this is not a minor matter. Uranium is a raw material used in nuclear power plants. In other words, it is an explosive. Now why did this ship enter the Hambantota port? It is said to be due to a technical fault. I hope you remember that the city of Beirut in Lebanon exploded about an year ago. That too was due to the storage of ammonium. Uranium is a more powerful explosive than ammonium nitrate. The ships that are supposed to be heading towards China are found at the Hambantota port. If this uranium that came to the Hambantota port exploded, Sri Lanka will lose another piece of its land. This ship contains a huge amount of uranium which can cause an explosion of that magnitude. Explosives are brought from ships to places that are said to be secure and to places claimed to have no threat to national security. This is exposed by the daughter of Kehelia Rambukwella who is currently working at the Hambantota port. They tell the country that they were not informed about this. While certain inquiries are made, it was revealed that their children are involved in these as well. Kapral's son is an employee of the Port City Company and there are Sri Lankan representatives at the Chinese Port Company too. The problem is that those who stated facts about the Chinese port and the Hambantota port are helpless when such explosive material is brought into the country. All they can do is request the ship to leave. <laughs> Where were the authorities when the ship carrying nuclear radioactive material entered Sri Lankan waters? Were they in slumber? According to this press release, the minister will request the ship to leave only after a discussion takes place. If we are unaware of a ship with radioactive material arriving at the port, we would not even know if foreign troops come and attack us. The unannounced arrival of a ship carrying radioactive material from Netherlands to China is the best example of the threat to national security. The government has said that steps would be taken to digitize television transmission after cabinet approval was received for the project recently. These were the views expressed on the project. The government is planning to digitalize television transmission. This is their latest project. They are planning to carry out this project using a loan obtained from Japan. The government was elected not for a system change in the television industry. However, now the government is quickly taking steps to create a system change in terms of television. The government will have to incur massive costs for the project. Is digitalizing the process the need of the hour? People are suffering without meals. They are finding it difficult to live. Their economies have been affected. The production process has been affected badly but they are obtaining a massive loan and attempting to change the system in terms of television. This is similar to Nero fiddling while Rome burned. Japan doesn't have a need to implement new systems here. Isn't the existing system sufficient? We can continue to run operations under the existing system. Are we a developed nation to introduce new systems? Are we a wealthy nation? Army Commander General Shavendra Silva has said that the Kulia PTA police jurisdiction will be placed under isolation from midnight today to curb the spread of COVID-19. The Tita Valgala Gramanilda division in Ganevata in the Kurunagadu district was placed in isolation yesterday. PCR tests were conducted in Ganevata today as well. Health officials said that the number of COVID-19 cases in the area had increased due to the failure to adhere to health regulations. Meanwhile, a media briefing regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in the country was held at the Health Promotion Bureau today. We noticed a surge in the number of gatherings during the recent past. We also noticed a large number of people who failed to adhere to the COVID-19 health regulations despite the warnings issued by the authorities. We are now going to face the consequences of such actions of the people. The people of this country are facing a crucial time in the fight against this virus. The number of COVID-19 cases has increased significantly during the past few days. At least now, we urge the public to adhere to the health guidelines that have been imposed. Abi Abe may Arachi the Gramma, Anivarema, 
The Sri Lanka Association of Medical Laboratory Technologists convened a media briefing and expressed the following views regarding the current COVID-19 situation in the country. We cautioned about the risk of burden in the public a long time ago. We made it clear to the health ministry that reducing PCR tests will only give rise to a third wave in the country. We told them not to blame the public once the third wave happens. Ukrainians were brought down to the country. In fact, tourists from all sorts of countries were brought down in the name of tourism. Yet, they did not allocate public hospitals to conduct PCR tests for them. Once they were sent to the private sector, the results were forgotten. At a time when Ukraine closed its borders, how were Ukrainians allowed to come here? These are serious questions and they must be answered. COVID-19 is not something that can be taken lightly. When our country's frontline workers were battling the situation, all they did was play with the pandemic and take advantage of it. The tourism industry fell into the hands of those whom they favored. Samples were sent to preferred laboratories for PCR tests. People were sent to hotels they favored as well. The Geological Survey and Mines Bureau has cancelled eight out of nine exploration licenses issued for a mineral project involving an Australian company in MANA. This decision comes after an investigation by News First, the voice of the people, uncovered several irregularities surrounding the project. The Geological Survey and Mines Bureau had issued nine licenses to five local companies to explore minerals in Manor. The companies are Kilsit Exploration Private Limited, Hammersmith Ceylon Private Limited, Supreme Solution Private Limited, Sanur Minerals Private Limited, and Orion Minerals Private Limited. An investigation by News First, the voice of the people revealed a ploy in which these firms were sold off to two Mauritian companies that were later acquired by an Australian company named Titanium Sands Limited. Three individuals named Kobe Raman Balakrishnan, Priyanta Abe Wardhana and Robert Nelson figured prominently in the process. Our investigation also exposed the manner in which at least three companies were sold off for a mere thousand rupees. Sri Lanka's law requires the five local license holders to notify the Geological Survey and Mines Bureau of any change in ownership. But the license holders had committed an offence by falsely insisting that their ownership had not fallen into the hands of a foreign entity. Accordingly, the Geological Survey and Mines Bureau had issued a letter to the license holders informing them the cancellation of eight exploration licences. This was following an investigation carried out by a committee that had been appointed by the Environment Secretary following our expose. Sources said that the ninth license is also expected to be cancelled in due course. The licenses have been cancelled on the grounds that the license holders had concealed information required to be furnished to the Geological Survey and Mines Bureau. Since 2016, Australia's Titanium Sands Limited that acquired the license holders had been focused solely on exploring and mining minerals in MANA. Valuable minerals used in the aircraft and paint industries, amounting to nearly 265 million tons, had been discovered in MANA following exploration carried out using the nine licenses. In documents filed with the Australian Stock Exchange, Titanium Sands Limited said, talks are being held with parties in China, Japan, India and the United Arab Emirates to export Sri Lanka's minerals. While licenses for the project have now been cancelled, Titanium Sands Limited has stopped trading at the Australian Stock Exchange until the 23rd of April. The company had requested for the trading halt pending an update on the company's Mena Island project. The long-standing human-elephant conflict continues to affect both humans and elephants in several parts of the country, even at present. News First, the voice of the people will continue to bring this matter to the spotlight until a solution is provided. On that note, we wrap tonight's edition of Primetime News. Do take care and good night.
तैयार नहीं दिया घेवा कदा नहीं बेटा नहीं 